But first, Jed Coffin grew up in Brunswick, and when he graduated from college, he was a young man who really didn't know what he wanted to do with his life. A young man looking for answers and a sense of purpose. As part of his search, he paddled a kayak hundreds of miles from Washington State to Alaska, where he eventually devoted much of his time and energy to boxing. In his memoir, Roughhouse Friday, Jed Coffin tells the story of what happened to him when he began competing in Friday night bouts in a big, rowdy bar in southeast Alaska. He had a lot to learn about that punishing sport, and his education began in a small-town gym. Stepped into the ring very early on with a guy named Victor. Yes. Did a little sparring with him. What yeah. happened in that first encounter? He dropped me to my knees. Uh, it didn't take very long. Um, I, I, my nose bled very easily at that point in my career. I later had it cauterized. Um, and, but, you know, the experience of getting pounded on like that in a gym, I felt like he was waking me out of a little bit of a slumber, in some uh, existential slumber, perhaps. As Coffin trained and got more serious, he decided to enter a competition that was an institution in Southeast Alaska, a night of boxing called Rough House Friday, which took place in a raucous bar with hundreds of customers looking on. The Asian sensation. Yeah. The offer was, I'll take you to a bar, um, you walk into a ring, and uh, I think the, the line he uses, you go into a bar, take your shirt off, and show everyone how tough you are. When you weren't in the ring, you were working as a teacher, mm -hmm. working with high school kids, yeah. kids who were having trouble with academics, who weren't motivated, hadn't had much success. What was that experience like for you? In a strange way, uh, it offered a, a pinhole into my own uh, adolescence. You know, seeing them, some of the issues they struggled with culturally, uh, racially, in terms of identity, I started to see impressions of the life that I'd, um, that I'd had in Maine. Jed Coffin's mother was from Thailand, his father from New England. They divorced soon after he was born, and some of the anxiety he felt as a boy being shuttled between his parents' two worlds turned into an unexpressed anger by the time he reached his early 20s. Stepping into the ring for Rough House Friday provided an outlet. As you got deeper into the boxing, you liked it more and more. And you started to get, you weren't great, but you started to get pretty good at it, pretty competent yeah. at it, right? Yeah, yeah. Most of the guys who came in there came in totally green, raw. I mean, just having, you know, the maybe a street fight here and there, maybe boxing with their buddies growing up. But, um, but I was training regularly, which gave me a, 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 a pretty radical advantage over most of the guys who would walk into the bar. Um, that said, you know, it, it's still, I, I look at footage of those early fights. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing very little to the table, very, very little to the ring, I suppose, you know, skill-wise. What was the atmosphere like in the bar? What was the crowd like? What was just the scene yeah. when you're fighting there? Yeah, uh, Marlantini's, uh, I remember the former owner told me that it was the biggest bar room in Southeast Alaska. Back then you could still smoke in bars, so the bar was often filled with smoke. Uh, 400 people could fit into Marlantini's legally. And this was not a crowd that exercised a lot of moderation when it came to drinking. Not, I mean, it's Alaska during the winter, you know what I mean? You gotta, um, you gotta take the fun, I suppose, when it's there. Yeah, buddy. As time went by and you fought in more fights, you compiled a pretty good record and, and you started to win some respect on this circuit. The big event that sort of caps off the year is called the Southeast Showdown. Yes. Fighters yeah. from all over Southeast Alaska in the biggest venue for that part of the state. Mm -hmm. And you were there to fight for all the glory. Yeah. What happened in that match? Well, um, I, I won, and that's the boring part. The more interesting part is that Jed's father, whom he had a strained relationship with, traveled to Alaska to see his son fight for the first time. And it was a really powerful moment when we got to not only confront um, some of the violence in the ring, but also some of the feelings between us. And it was the beginning of a very long, long process of, I would say, reconciliation between the two of us that, um, that I'm really, really grateful to have gone through with him. The book tells two stories, your story as a fighter, yeah. and then your story just as a young man right. trying to learn who he is, and what he wants to become. Was it hard for you to go back and 
dig up some painful memories right. and also to tell the story in a true way. Absolutely. I was very afraid of, of telling the story of my family's past. I was afraid of hurting people's feelings. I was afraid of um, emotions that I might not be ready to experience. I was in my 30s. Um, my first publisher dropped the book after I, frankly, kind of, um, to be honest, had a, a little bit of an emotional implosion where I just didn't really know what my story was. I was just really horrified of my own material. You know, it's, it's very difficult to tell the truth, um, your emotional truth, and also feel like you're, you're respecting and honoring the people um, whose stories you're telling. When Coffin left Alaska and moved back to Maine, he started boxing again. But he didn't tell anyone about the fighting he'd done in Rough House Friday. I don't think anyone could tell that I had any boxing experience because I was such an inexperienced, I was a barroom brawler, not a boxer. It's two different sports. Now, at a completely different stage in your life, mm -hmm. 15 years later, you're in your late 30s, do you have a, a contentment, a peace inside that you were searching for back then? I don't regret the person I was then, the, the violence that I felt, the anger that I might have felt, the need to throw myself in front of punches and to, to trade them. I just know that he was an essential um, version of myself that I needed to kind of experiment with. To be in a place now where I, I, I try to be a good dad, a good husband, a good teacher, a um, good member of my community, you know, and, but I, I just know if I hadn't gone through his experience, I wouldn't be where I am now. So where is he now? Well, as a young man, he was itching to get out of Maine, couldn't wait to get out of here. Of course, now he's back in the state. <laughs> You've heard this kind of theme before. He teaches at the University of New Hampshire, has two daughters, much different person. You can really tell he was working things out on the pages as he wrote that book and sort of wrestling through that story. Yeah, and it's, it's a really well-told story. It was one of, the, one of the best books that I read in all of 2019. Mm, well, that's saying something because you're a reader. <laughs>